YouTube video in a good long while. First off, ridiculous mess in the floor. We'll take care of that soon. That computer doesn't really need to be here anymore. It's still a wonderful computer. It's not a bad one by any means. It just doesn't need to be in this room anymore. Um, as you can see, I've got the original green. I've got the computer. The bleh. Let me try that again. I've got the green computer's original mouse and keyboard, which is pretty interesting. I didn't know. They were just sitting there in the closet. This is something you don't usually see. These key, this keyboard and mouse didn't really... It wasn't CyberPower OEM. CyberPower did not ship these with the machine. They came with the Aspire... Um, we have the Aspire fan set. I believe they came with that. The machine case is, was made by Apivia. I don't know if they're the same company, but... It had a complete Aspire fan set with... Uh, an Aspire power supply in there. Uh, and the power supply just had blue glowing fans. Because I don't think any of that stuff was really original to the case. But, these, this keyboard and this mouse would have come with the fan set. Um, with the fan set, it would have come with several fans, and I believe it also has some as neat Aspire, um, filters and stuff on there, so, kinda cool. And then I've got my other keyboard hooked up over here because... Two monitors. Pretty cool. <clears throat> and... The setup seems to be working pretty well for me. And we'll go ahead and wake up the computer. This is what's nice about a PS2 mouse and my computer. See, it's got power at all times, so the scroll wheel is glowing. I just have to move the mouse to wake up the computer. <coughs> So here it is. The keyboard has a few issues. Sometimes I think I think it's the H key, either that or the S key, that sometimes doesn't want to respond. But hey, think about how much I would have used this keyboard back in the day. And this is not uh, this isn't a cheap keyboard, but it's not an expensive keyboard. Like it's the kind of key, it's the old-fashioned kind of keyboard. I mean, this little keyboard down here, kind of like the typing feel better, but um, it's not the old kind of keyboard that I like better. It also got a weird layout, as you can tell. It's like the it's like the UK layout with a few modifications. So see this monitor coming on, it's just blank right now. Um this keyboard I really have set up over here so I can do main stuff easily, but I don't have main installed right now. Gonna get to that later. This keyboard is not quite as cheaply built as that other black keyboard, like I said, but it's just the kind that wears out easier anyway, so, yeah. <clears throat> and, it's got a nice clicky feet, it's got a nice clicky sound to it. Not quite, it's no Model M, but it is pretty clicky. I've got my two, i got my internet browser and my Opera Mail on that screen, because if I go over and open the Opera Mail client, then it will, op then it will open it on that screen, just because that's where I had it opened last. I decided to go back to the good old Windows XP look, just because I like, just because we all know and love it. Well, no, we all know it. We don't necessarily all love it, but I think you're crazy if you don't love it. Well, I guess you're crazy if you don't like it. Not necessarily if you don't love it. I mean, there's a lot of people who like the Arrow themes better, but they still like this style. I've also got a few other things, but the one Windows XP style theme that is missing. That is also the one that I absolutely loved was the olive green one. I don't know why, but this theme pack just did not have it. And I thought that was really stinky. The blue is my second favorite, though. The silver is kind of boring. The Royale's in there, too. 
But the Royale Windows 7 theme seems to have a few bugs. I'm not sure why. I think it's mainly just unfinished. There's a few weird graphical artifacts. This is indeed the Arrow version of the Luna theme, as you can see. There was a there was a version that stayed pretty much true to the original. But I picked the Arrow style because, well, if you don't pick an Arrow theme, you don't get the Arrow effects. I think it's kind of stupid because... Come on, there's plenty of themes that are good that aren't Arrow themes, but people still like the window animations and stuff. So I'm going to put this thing to sleep again. Sleep. And they both faded out at the same time. That's kind of cool. This one seems to have a little bit of a delay, and I'm not quite sure why. It is plugged into the DVI-I port through VGA adapter, I guess, so... And something I'd just like to add on to the end of this video is a little trick I learned on my laptop. Because um, I removed its hard drive and then realized I don't want to really put it back in because I don't want to shock it to death. It's static. It is winter here. If you're from Australia or somewhere else alike. But, um... It's a little trick I learned with the CD drive considering I can't boot from another CD like another CD drive. I can boot from everything but a USB CD drive, it seems. And I want to put Windows 7 on my other hard drive, which I did get out. But I did get. Obtained it by dissecting my One Touch 4 mini enclosure. So, um, so I'll be showing a few things to you once I get upstairs. Alright, I'm upstairs now. Here is my Mac Store One Touch 4 mini enclosure. That is a 60 gigabyte C8 Momentus in there right now. The ironic thing is that it already had a 250 gigabyte C8 Momentus in there. Ob quite obviously, Mac Store makes hard drives. Very obviously, because this is an internal PC drive that has a Mac Store label on it. There's another internal PC drive that has the Mac Store label on it. This one right here is um, LBA compatible original LBA compatible 20 gigabyte IDE. This one is SATA 3, but my green computer only had SATA 1.5, so it's set to that right now. Never realized that until the other day. But indeed, this had a Seagate hard drive in it. What are... that is just so bizarre. So, anyway, right here is my Windows 7 Professional Disk, 64-bit edition. Never could get the 32-bit version to quite work correctly because it's a Dell OEM, but it did work, kind of. I'm gonna power my laptop on. So in here, I've got—I don't know if it's actually quieter or louder yet. I haven't really done a stress test on the hard drive, so just push F10 a whole bunch. Okay, so we got the boot menu up. Oh, by the way, the Western Digital Scorpio still works fine. It's right over here. I just don't really want to put it back in because I'm afraid I'm going to shock it or something. Probably, to be safe, I probably shouldn't have picked it up, but that's okay. Still didn't shock it, so. I decided I would try to deal with a hard drive I didn't really care quite as much about. Here's the Phoenix Award. Oh, I think it's just Phoenix BIOS in this computer. This is the Phoenix BIOS boot menu. As all of you know, I've gone on many rants about Opti Arc CD drives. I don't know if I really have gone many rants, but this is an Opti Arc drive. I think I'm going to title this video "My New Computer Setup and How to Beat Some Sense into an Opti Arc CD Drive," and you'll see why I say that in a second. If you listen to it. sound very good. Like, it, it's achieved focus lock. Well, actually, it almost has achieved focus lock. It's just having some alignment issues. Check this out, though. Here. Now listen to it. And there you go, that is the Seeking of Happiness. Go and push enter. Lights come on. Windows is loading files. 
And then, while it's booting up, I always plug in my USB drive, and Windows will recognize it while it's loading the drivers. And then I can pop the disk in that after Windows boots up and install it off of the more reliable drive. Since this one just doesn't work practically at all. Unless you can get it to work, but I don't really want to beat the crap out of it um, every few minutes just to get it to start working. So, really, this works pretty well um, when I just do this. So, I guess. As always, thanks for watching, I'll see you next time. And I'll just let this video render while I'm installing Windows on this machine, so. And another thing to note, the CD drive and hard drive indicators are right next to each other on this laptop. I think that's kind of nifty. On some older gateway laptops, there was also a floppy disk drive indicator right here, because there was a floppy disk drive over here. I don't think any of the N-series machines had floppy drives, though. Alright, for real this time, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. If you would like, you can visit the links in the description to see my computer-related blog, my personal blog, and, last but not least, my other channel, where I mainly play video games with friends. Oh, by the way, don't bother trying to click those buttons.